welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and today you're watching a vlog. <laughs> I don't actually know what this vlog is going to be. You know because there's a thumbnail and a title that gives you all the information you need for what I'll be reading and what the theme of it is. I don't know yet. Usually when I'm starting a vlog and I don't know what I'm doing, I just film the intro at the end to tell you about it. But I don't know. I just thought I would take you on this journey with me of filming a vlog, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> so the reason that I'm doing this is one, I have a lot of books on my TBR that I'm super excited about right now. And I really want to vlog them, but I don't necessarily have any sort of preference for what type of vlog I do. So I put a poll up on my Instagram to ask a couple options. If you would rather see just like a casual weekly vlog, a reading new thriller vlog, or reading new book of the month pick vlog, maybe you're watching one of those themes. Maybe you're watching something else. Who knows? You know. I don't know. I have another vlog I'm working on right now. I'm very, very excited about it. It requires some pre-work and I'm running into some roadblocks for it, but I'm so excited. I really need to make that vlog happen, but that was planned to go live when this video is going live and I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it done in time. So we're just gonna vlog what I'm reading this week instead. I know I'm gonna be reading Daisy Darker by Alice Beanie because I just got that yesterday and that's all I wanna read right now is that book. So I picked that up last night. I'll tell you about how it's going in a bit. As for what else I'm gonna read, they're on the thumbnail, you know, I don't know. We'll see what happens, but um, yeah, this is it. Welcome to a week of me reading some books with some thematic tie, putting them all together that you're aware of and I am not. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> Hello, same day, a couple hours later. I am 80 pages into Daisy Darker, so I wanted to give you a first impressions update on the story. What I know about this book going into it is just the very basic synopsis that this is about a family that is all getting together at this like beach house isolated area for their grandmother's birthday and then she dies and then other people start dying too. I know it's supposed to be heavily based on And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, which I read a couple years ago and enjoyed that one quite a bit. I like that sort of kitschy setup. So should be a book that I really enjoy. My history with Alice Feeney, I have read Rug, Paper, Scissors, loved it, five stars. Then I read His and Hers, did not like that, two stars. So I have been hit or miss with her. Don't know where I'm gonna land with this. And 80 pages in, I'm struggling a little bit, to be honest, with getting into the book. The writing style is what's killing me the most. The concept, I think, is still good. I'm still intrigued by the concept and it's starting to get a little bit more interesting. Everything that's laid out in the synopsis that the grandmother dies just happened. So it did have quite a bit of a buildup. But the interesting thing is that the grandmother wrote a children's story a long time ago called Daisy Darker's Little Secrets or something like that. Daisy also has two other siblings. And so it's always been a weird thing of like, why did she write about Daisy in that story? And that became this big, huge phenomenon. Like it's supposed to be as big as Goodnight Moon in the world they're living in. And when the grandmother's found dead, there's like a nursery rhyme written on the wall too. That makes it seem like the grandmother was harboring a lot of ill feelings towards a lot of the family. They are a dysfunctional family for sure. But that part in itself is starting to get a little more intriguing. So I'm fine with the setup. I like the setting. I like the setup of the story. And I'm intrigued as far as that goes, but the writing style, I'm just not loving. She just keeps finishing paragraphs with these annoying little statements or just like overuse of metaphors. Like she describes one of the sisters being like a walking frown and she'll just be talking about the parents and then she'll make this like statement about marriage is blah, 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 or families are so complicated. It's just like a lot of little closing statements that are, there's just too many of them that it almost feels like she started that way in her writing of saying, here are all the things I want my work to say. And now I'm gonna write a lot of filler around it, but I'm not gonna take out the statements. It's just a little too in your face for me, like a little bit of spoon feeding of like, here's what I want you to take away about this character. Here's what I want you to take away about these family dynamics.
So I'm hoping that I just get really sucked into the story and I can ignore some of that and look over the writing. But yeah, that is my initial first impression of the book. I'm going to read quite a bit more. I would say I am cautiously optimistic. I don't know if you can hear it right now, but it is storming right now, which is perfect for this book. And I'm really tempted to sit outside in the storm to tell you about it. I got my patio, of course, covered, but I also don't think you would be able to hear me over the storm. I still wanna do it anyway, but I won't because I want you to be able to hear me. But I've read a lot more of Daisy Darker. I am, I don't know, a little over two thirds of the way. That was my power flickering. <laughs> I'm a little over two thirds of the way through the book and I think I've cracked the case. I think I've solved it. I think I know what's going on. I won't spoil it for you. I will in a second, but I'm gonna put a spoiler bar up. So if you don't wanna be spoiled, you don't have to, but I am really sure that I know what's going on. I put my detective hat on, I found the clues and I really feel like I got it, which is like a little bit of a bummer because if it is what I think it is, it's a pretty big plot twist and I would have loved to be surprised by that. But also if I guessed it, that means the clues were laid well, so that's fine too. But it is always a bummer when you don't get to get that like shock moment from a thriller. I'm certain you can hear that thunder. You absolutely have to be able to hear that thunder. What a perfect stormy day. But yeah, I am enjoying the story overall a little bit more than I was just for some non-spoilery thoughts first. I'm still noticing a lot of things with the writing style that I'm just like, ugh. I just so much like cliche and overuse of metaphor and just very weird like it feels different from the other two Alice Feeney books I've read before like they all feel different his and hers rock paper scissors and Daisy Darker all feel like they were written by different people to me which maybe it's just because it's been a long time since I've read each of those and if I read them more closely together they would feel more similar but they just feel so different in my mind and it almost comes to like a matter of trope preference with picking up Alice Feeney books to me rather than liking her style as an author because it just feels so different every time. But yeah, I am enjoying this a little bit more, but I'm still not absolutely loving it. Like I can't get past the writing and I just don't have that wow factor from this book that a lot of people seem to have from reading it. Like I like it, but it does feel really similar to a lot of other things, which I thought I was gonna be fine with because I love isolation, locked room mysteries, but this one doesn't feel unique enough to me. Like it reminds me a lot of If Knives Out and Then There Were None and One by One by Ruth Ware all had a baby. And it doesn't feel like it stands on its own a ton. I guess for the plot twist, if it is what I think it is, that'll make it feel like it stands more on its own. But for the experience of reading the book so far, I'm just like, I like it, it's fine, it's good, but it doesn't feel super special to me. Now, I wanna let you know what I think the plot twist is. So I'm gonna put a spoiler bar up here. I'm also gonna sit down because I don't wanna hold the camera. <laughs> I really think that I've cracked the case on this one. So I'm gonna put a spoiler bar up and I'm gonna talk about what I think is going on in this book because if I'm right, I wanna prove that I knew. Like, it's not just confirmation bias at the end. I really knew what was going on. And if I'm wrong, it'll be really funny to look back at this and see that I felt so sure of this thing. So if you don't wanna know spoilers, make sure you skip over this part to where you don't see the spoiler bar anymore because I'm gonna tell you what I think is happening in this book. I think Daisy Darker is dead. I think she is dead as a doornail. Is doornail the phrase? Doorknob? I think this woman is dead. She has already talked about so often that she's died so many times in her life because of her heart condition. So that's the first thing that's weird about her is how she's been able to die multiple times. I don't think this girly came back after one of her deaths. She talks about how these people haven't spoken to her in years, how her oldest sister has refused to acknowledge her. She tries to talk to Connor and she's like, Connor, hello, I'm saying all these things and he ignores her. She does the little prank thing with him where she goes on this computer and types boo. And so I think that'll be really funny to look back on if she is a ghost, cause you're like, oh my God, like that's why he didn't even acknowledge it because he really did think it was a ghost there. Um, she keeps being around while Connor and Rose are whispering to one another and she's like right there to hear them whispering. Why would they do that if she was right there? And most of all, literally no one has acknowledged her in this whole book except for her Nana in the very beginning and Trixie. I have put the clues together, okay? I have seen all of this. I feel so confident in this theory. This feels like a huge plot twist and I am really kind of surprised that I caught on to it. But after reading for a while and I think just reading a lot of it in one sitting, I was like, God, why does Daisy play such a back burner role in this book? Like no one's ever talking to her. She's never saying anything. She's just observing what's going on around her and then talking about memories that she has of everyone. And in the memories, people are talking to her, but in the present day, nobody is talking to her. So that's how I pieced it together. I'm pretty sure 
if she's a ghost. Also, if she is a ghost, that means like who's doing the killing. I think it's a combination maybe of her doing some initial planning with her Nana. I think her Nana's death was an accident gone wrong, maybe. But I think Trixie is more behind it, specifically because they keep finding these VHS tapes with the Scrabble letters on them. And in the beginning, she mentions that she was playing Scrabble with Trixie. But if you piece it back together and Daisy is dead, then she wasn't really playing Scrabble with Trixie. I mean, she was if Trixie saw her. But what was Trixie doing with the Scrabble, huh? These Scrabble letters all of a sudden ending up with the VHS tapes. Like, I think Trixie is involved. She is the one that comes off as a sweet one in the beginning. It's always a sweet one. It's always a sweet, quiet one that you don't suspect. And I'm gonna be very impressed with myself if I'm right with all of this. And if I'm wrong, it's gonna be very hilarious. <laughs> So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this book tonight. Hopefully it keeps storming for a while so I can finish it in the stormy atmosphere. And I'll let you know when I finish it what I thought. So I finished Daisy Darker last night and I was right with like 95% of my predictions. There was one final reveal thing too at the end of the book that I didn't mention in my predictions, but I kind of was catching on to before it was announced. So I basically saw everything coming in this book. I wasn't even trying that hard to see everything coming. Like I wasn't making notes or thinking about it too insanely hard. It just didn't come off as as much of a shock to me as it was trying to do. So I don't know how that happened. But overall, my experience with this one, it's definitely the type of thriller that I enjoy reading. I think these types of mystery thrillers are just fun. This is entertaining. I will probably always pick up a book that has a locked room premise that people are talking about because I think the idea of a locked room is fun. This book in particular though, didn't really stand out to me among the crowd. <laughs> Even with the plot twist that it had, because it didn't shock me, I just didn't have like that amazing of an experience with it. And I really just cannot look past the writing of this one. I just did not like the writing. There were just so many, so many cliches, metaphors, simile, like all throughout the book that even as I was getting more engaged with the story, it was so hard for me to ignore all these statements about family and just everything that was just sprinkled throughout the text, throughout the whole story. So I think where I'm gonna land with this one for a rating is a 3.5. I enjoyed it a little bit more than a three, not quite a four for me, rounding up to a four on Goodreads. But this was like a slightly better than average book, which is still good, still good experience. So now for Alice Feeney's books, I've had a five star, a 3.5 and a two star. So that's quite the range. Still have two more books on her backlist to read, which I will definitely be checking both of those out. But yeah, a little bit disappointing that I didn't have the great experience with this that a lot of other people are having. So many people are giving this five stars or really high four stars and really, really enjoying it. And I don't know why that happens because I wasn't even going into this one with super high expectations for myself. Like I saw everyone loving it and I was like, oh yeah, I'm sure I'll like it. But I wasn't expecting it to do anything too crazy. I thought it was just gonna be atmospheric and like people just love a locked room mystery. Like that's just really in right now. So I don't know, I'm kind of surprised by this one that I didn't like it as much as everyone else is. But really I'm surprised other people are liking it as much as they are, I guess. This really reminds me of the experience I had with In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead where everyone was loving that book. They were raving about it. They were saying it was the best thing ever. So many people were recommending that book to me. And then I thought it was just fine. Like it was good slash fine. I gave that one like a 3.5 star as well. So I don't know, there's like something weird with my taste that doesn't align with a lot of people, but I can't put my finger on what it is. So anyways, all that to say, like still pick this one up if you're interested in it. A lot of people are liking it. A lot of people are loving it. I liked it. I thought it was fine. Thought it was a good time. So glad I read it. Um, but yeah, that was my experience with Daisy Darker. So at this point, I do know that this is a reading new thrillers vlog. I figured out what we are conceptualizing this as. And so I'm gonna be picking up The It Girl by Ruth Ware next. Both of these books are ones that I got in my book of the month box this month. So this also could have been a book of the month reading vlog, but we're just calling it reading new thrillers. I'm gonna read this one. It is a bit of a thicker book. I believe it's over 400 pages. Yep, it comes in around 420 pages. Don't really know much of what it's about. I know it is like set at a college campus, some sort of school environment, group of friends getting back together. Something happened a long time ago with the it girl. That's all I really know. Didn't really need to know too much going into it because I've read everything Ruth Ware has written. So I was gonna pick it up no matter what. Not hearing the best reviews of this one. So not expecting this to knock my socks off. Probably expecting this to be like a three or 3.5, but I don't know, maybe it will surprise me. One can only hope. So I'm gonna be picking this one up tonight. And after I get through the first part of the book, I'll let you know what I'm thinking about it.
kitchen, I'm making a HelloFresh meal. I'm having some pork bowls that I'm pretty excited about and having a nice hazy IPA while I'm cooking. I feel like I don't talk about that often, but I am an IPA girly. I feel like most often you see me having a glass of wine with what I'm reading, like on sprints or in um, reading vlogs, but I'm an IPA girly all the way. And it's an IPA kind of night because we're having pork bowls. So I figured I would check in with you really quick on the It Girl because I started that last night. This one is interesting. There's a lot of things in this one. Mango, grapefruit, it says it's hoppy, chewy, dank, fluffy, sticky, foggy, pungent, kiwi, citrus, fresh, pithy, bright, jam, orange, groovy, rad, yummy, nectar, cushy, guava, tropical, smooth, tasty, enjoyable, done. And I would agree, this one definitely packs a punch. But anyway, I started The It Girl last night. I didn't read too much of it because I was tired last night and it wasn't really immediately pulling me in, but I wanted to tell you that I figured out what it was about, so I'll let you know what it was about. And then it's a Wednesday night, which means my friend Sav from Riveting Reads is going to be doing reading sprints on our channel tonight, and I anticipate reading a lot more of the book then, so I wanted to give like a first impression now while I'm cooking dinner. We're getting ready to cook dinner. What I realized this book is about, you've got two timelines you're following when this girl goes off to college, and then later, her name is Hannah. When she goes to college, she ends up living with this girl named April, who is beautiful and the it girl. She ends up getting murdered in the present day. She's been dead for many years now. The person who was accused of murdering her was in prison and he just died. And he has always insisted that he was innocent. And now the group of friends from college is getting back together, investigating what really happened, who was the real killer. It doesn't feel particularly unique or interesting yet, but I'm still gonna give it a chance. I'm only like 30 pages in or something, but pretty basic premise. Don't know if I'm gonna love the dual timeline because it keeps kind of pulling me out, but we'll see. I'm gonna read more tonight after I cook dinner and I will let you know how it's going. So I've read a lot more of The It Girl. I'm halfway through this book. And let me set the scene for you. When One by One by Ruth Ware came out, whenever that came out, 2020, 2021, I don't remember. But when it came out, a lot of people were reading it and they were hating it. And they were saying it was Ruth Ware's worst book she's ever written. And I've read everything Ruth Ware has written. And I started reading Ruth Ware when I was in high school. And I love Ruth Ware. I've always loved Ruth Ware. So I gave her the benefit of the doubt and I read One by One and I vlogged it. And I liked the book. I thought it was fine. I gave it a three star. I thought everyone was being too harsh on the book. I thought it was a good book. It was fine. It was classic Ruth Ware. I knew what to expect with Ruth Ware and it was just fine. Just fine. More than anything in the world with every bone in my body that is the experience that I was hoping to have with this book. I have heard so many people bash this book. I've heard people say this is worse than one by one that this is now Ruth Ware's worst book ever and I said oh no 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 that's my girl Ruth. Same thing's gonna happen. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna love it. I'm at least gonna like it. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be Ruth Ware. It's gonna be classic. It's gonna be at least three star. I'm halfway through it now and I just don't I just don't understand what happened. This is so boring. It is so boring. I'm so bored. Nothing has happened in 200 pages. Nothing has happened. It's just so slow. It's so boring. Nothing is happening. I'm not intrigued in this story whatsoever. I'm gonna finish it because I am. But if this was the first thing I ever picked up from Ruth Ware, I would be very hesitant to pick up more in the future. It's just so boring for a mystery or a mystery thriller. It's so boring, it's so boring. And I just wanted to love it. I just wanted to like it. All I wanted to do was like it. I just wanted to like it and say, you know what, it's not so bad. People are being really hard on it, but it is so boring. All that is happening is you just keep going back and forth in the timeline. And all that's happened is just what you know has happened, which is that the girl died in college and you're seeing their friendship. And in the present day, the guy who was accused for it is now dead. And they're realizing it might not have been him after all. And that's it, that's it, that's all that's happened. You've learned one tiny little detail that isn't even that interesting about April and her circumstances right before she died. But I feel like I've been reading this book forever. I'm halfway through. This is 192 pages of what I feel like you could accomplish in like 50 pages. It's just so mind blowing to me. I knew people said it was slow. This is not what I expected when they said slow. This is like really slow. It's so slow. I've heard the twist is good. I've heard that you'll be surprised by the ending. So I'm hoping that we can at least make that happen, but I'm not as hopeful as I was when starting this video. I finished. It was a one star. I'm very sad about it, but I'm an honest reviewer here and that's how I felt about it. I am mind blown how little happened in this book. The whole thing just felt like the synopsis. The end plot twist wasn't exciting enough to redeem anything. I just don't know what happened. I just, I really can't explain 
this book. Like I would have never believed it was going to be like this. I was going to give it a chance because people are really harsh on Ruth Ware's stuff because she's more of like a classic mystery style, mystery thriller writer. But like, oh my gosh, wow. I just, I did not like this one. I was very, very bored. The writing was fine, but just nothing was happening the whole time. I had no intrigue in the story. I did not care about the characters and it just felt so repetitive. It felt like the first 350 pages was just the synopsis and then the last 50 pages was some events which is really sad to say but that was my experience with this i'm still definitely gonna pick up ruth Ware's stuff in the future because i've read everything she's written i really like stuff from ruth Ware in the past still gonna keep reading her stuff but this one was not it for me <laughs> so that is a wrap on this vlog i read two new mystery thrillers one more successful than the other one but glad to get them both off my tbr because i was excited to read both of them let me know down in the comments below if you've read them and what you think of them if you liked the it girl please let me know i really want to see people enjoying it that would make me feel really good <laughs> and if you want to leave an emoji down in the comments below to let me know that you got to the end of today's video let's do something beachy or islandy for daisy darker but that is it for me thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all in my next video bye